Hey guys, good morning. So I'm standing behind our barn at the moment where it is a complete disaster. It's kind of like everything in the spring ends up back here and then usually sometime around this time of year we come back here and kind of try to make some sense of everything. Um, but that's not what I'm doing today. I'm actually back here to grab a planter that I would like to try to stain for the center of our vegetable garden. I still don't have anything sitting there yet. Kind of don't even want to show it but this is reality. We've got pots and tubing and our wood pile. We've got pieces from our front lawn that we moved back here. This fence section, you know, the concrete pillars with the fence section was underneath our crab apple. We will be using that again. But this right here is the planter I want to work on. It was here when we moved in and I'm not even certain that these two things go together. This is like a leaf motif right there. Kind of, well, I call it a leaf motif because I've got something similar. And then this is a garland on the top, but doesn't matter. <laughs> They're, they're proportioned nicely. So um, this was actually what was in there when we moved in, sedum. I never even replanted it and this has had not a, not a speck of water from me all season long. So it's looking kind of sad. So anyway, we're gonna clean that out. We're going to attempt to stain the pot and the pillar and hopefully we get it to look nice. I've stained a lot of concrete in my day. And as many of you know, we have very hard water here. So typically I order all of my pots and, and statuary and things in a natural concrete because hard water, even though it still forms, you don't notice it as much. I like all the other darker finishes and things and I would love to have some pieces like that, um, but it just becomes kind of a maintenance nightmare. But I'm thinking with this container, I mean, it's already kind of pink. So I'm thinking we're gonna go with a deeper color, maybe a deeper gray. We've gotta head down to the store and grab some stain and I don't even get anything special, like it can be wood stain. That works just as well as anything else I've ever tried. And this is where I'm hoping to put it, right in the center of the vegetable garden. It's a full sun location right here. It's just begging for something pretty right there. I was thinking initially of doing a fountain and I may still do that but it is an awful windy spot. So I thought that the water, like filling it all the time, I don't know, we'll see. Let's start with a container and go from there. All right, so I got a couple of different colors of stain here. Right there, smoke gray and dark walnut. Typically I'll use Danish oil if I have it on hand, but I'm out and so is the store. And it's usually just a nice, I get it in dark walnut. So I got the dark walnut color here, which is the way I may have to take it. The smoke gray is one I wanna try first. I'm just not sure with the concrete already being kind of a pink color. I'm not sure if the gray is gonna really show up that well. I may just have to take it dark brown. And I typically don't go for the actual concrete stain because I have to commit to a whole gallon of it. <laughs> and I typically don't wanna do that. And wood stain works great. We have to touch them up so often anyway, no matter what kind of stain we use, that this is just the route I usually take. So I'm gonna go grab the container, um, probably, I'm gonna use a dolly and bring it out to a shaded area. We'll get it cleaned up and get it stained. Now it's up off the rocks. So what I'm gonna do, I've got this pot up on a couple bricks so it's up off the gravel. I'm gonna clean this out. We'll hose them down and brush them down, which really there's not a whole lot. I thought there would be far more like cobwebs and things like that. I was gonna take the power washer to them, but I don't think that would be a wise idea. We've got some cracks and some crumbly spots and I think that might make it worse. So anyway, we'll get them cleaned up next. Ooh, they're very dry. My word. There's some dirt in there. There's a lot of dirt in here and it's really dry. It's kind of like fingernails on a chalkboard. Because fingernails on a chalkboard? Yep. What? <laughs> what? Wow, what a big. I think this soil is older than you are. Huh? What? Yeah. Yeah, you're three, and I think this soil is probably eight. Seven or eight. Okay. 
Dang. Got them both cleaned up and the pot is pretty much cleaned out. I didn't get every last speck of dirt out of there, but the bottom half seemed to be like road mix. It was a sandy soil with big rocks in it. And then there was pot and potting soil on the top half. So I don't know what that was about or how long that soil had actually been in there. But then I brushed off anything excess that I could find. I missed a spot right here. Jeez. Anyway, I decided not to hose them down just because I'm starting to lose my shade here. And I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of my stain. I actually went downstairs and found, cause I needed a brush. I'm gonna spray a water guard on the top of it too. But I found a special walnut right here that's a little bit lighter than the dark walnut. So I'm gonna paint a little swatch of all three of these on the inside of the pot. I don't know, right in here, just to see what it looks like. So we can decide. All right guys, so here's our three colors. We've got special walnut right here. This is the dark walnut and this is the gray. Gray is out, do not like that at all. Not on this finish anyway. Um, so now it's between the two of these. I'm actually thinking of doing this because I don't think I want it to be that dark and saturated. I'm thinking this is a nice kind of in between just to kind of spruce up how it already looks without like major change. It'll look like a major change, but not as drastic as this. All right, so here we go. how it turned out you guys it's so pretty look at that color I'm glad I didn't go darker I think it would have been too much of a weight in the middle of the garden and we've got a lot of black going on already you know the black fence black arbors I think black or something really dark would have been too much in the middle I think this would be just perfect and it masked that pink color really well and once I get it in place I'm going to spray it with this multi-surface waterproofer. I'm gonna run the drip and we will plant it up. I've got some really pretty stuff over here. my goodness I love it so it's funny because I knew these pieces didn't match I think maybe I already mentioned that but the bottom is from Al's Garden Art I think it's now called Fiori Stone it was Al's Garden Art back in the day and then the tops from Henry Studio <laughs> you know what though it works we're going with it I think it's a great size for the middle here because I can still have stuff that kind of grows over but I can still you know navigate this walkway really easily so Paul did come over, he helped me um, tip the base so I could get some drip tubing underneath. So what I'm planning to do is I've got it here. I'm gonna just scoot the rocks out of the way and bury that right behind this bed. And these vegetable garden beds go off for 45 minutes every morning. So I'm gonna put a splitter on this faucet right here. And so it can feed this bed and the pot.
I absolutely love it. So a view from the front here, I love that it's a different color than the entryway containers. It's the perfect scale, so large enough to where it looks appropriate, but small enough to where we have plenty of space to get around it. And I don't honestly even notice that it's a different style. <laughs> the pillar to the pot, it looks so, like, it looks perfection there. And I had the most beautiful menagerie of plants to use here. The only question mark, like, well, I'll just have to see how it does, is the lavender. Typically, lavender doesn't want as much water as the rest of this stuff, but I'm hoping that because this is such an exposed area, you know, to wind, full sun, so much heat around it, even though it's going to be getting consistent water, the pot will be, I'm hoping that it's okay. The other things that we have in here are yellow, my darling, echinacea. We have a diamond, yep, mountain euphorbia here, which will fill in the front and it'll, they get big. Like I kind of expect it to be this poof above everything else. We have a um, Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime, sweet potato vine, a new Vista Supertunia called Jazzberry, which I love. It's got such a saturated bright pink color and I may regret the fact that I put three Vistas in here. You guys know what Vistas do. Got one on this side and one on this side but it's gonna be pretty. And because we're into July, I think we'll be okay because we're already missing two months of the growing season. So this might just like look perfection in a month or two. Looks perfection today, I think. The other couple of plants I have in here are Cake Pops Purple Verbena, which I put in our barn pots and they look awesome. They're new either this year or for next year. Um, but they kind of looked stringy like this when I planted them and then they quickly put on a bunch of growth and beautiful, almost just they look kind of like lavender in the end ish kind of sort of a little bit lighter in color and then we have a plant called calliophis i don't know if that's how you pronounce it ladybird lemonade which i know very little about it may want less water than it's going to get here that's why i tucked it toward the back this is a new one and so i just kind of wanted to test it and see what it does so if you look in there you can see the drip tubing running around in there um, i actually ended it with a half gallon per hour emitter uh, emitter emitter mercy now the heat's getting to me anyway i ended it with a half gallon per hour emitter right at the root ball of our sweet potato vine because that's going to be our biggest water baby right here so i'm giving it a little extra the drip tubing comes out the bottom I raked away the gravel, tucked the tubing underneath, and then it cruises right along the back side of the raised bed and pops right up into the raised bed. And let me kind of unearth what I've done here so you can see it. First, I put a um, hose splitter on so I could go two different directions. They're both open right now, so they'll both be receiving water. This side has the drip to our raised bed. This side has a hose adapter, so it's threaded onto the splitter. And then I put a piece of half inch black poly, just solid poly on the end there and just ended it. So it's crimped right here. And then I used a quarter inch coupler popped into that tubing and put the coupler in there attached to my drip tubing. So, and I can kind of bury all of that stuff. And that's it, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed seeing this project come together. I love having something out here, having some color and some interest in the center. It's been screaming for something. I don't even think I put anything out here. Did I last year? Did I just leave it empty? I think I did. That was never the intention. I always intended to have something in here. I also love that I was able to use something that I already had that just needed some TLC. I just needed to make the time to fix it. Um, now I have two new colors of stain that I can use for other projects. There's always a positive in that. Um, anyway, that's it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.